Today, we will be talking about some of the fundamentals behind radar detection, and why stealth is so effective that nations such as Russia and China have been pushing to pursue it. This is the radar range equation. On the left side of the equation, we have our max, which is our output and which tells us the maximum range that a radar can detect a target, based on the variables on the other side of the equation. The first of these factors is transmit power, which is the amount of microwave power, in watts, that is output by the radar. The more output power, the further the radar can reach. The second factor is antenna gain, which is a ratio of how much energy is transmitted in or received from a certain direction by the radar's antennas when compared to a hypothetical antenna that emits that same energy evenly in all directions. In the graphs shown here, the charts on the left show a hypothetical isotropic antenna, while the charts on the right are real and show the high gain delivered by the parabolic grid antenna shown in the image on the right. If the little spikes emitting in other directions can be further focused into the main lobe, the antenna's gain would become even higher. The third factor is wavelength, measured in meters, which is the inverse of frequency. The higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. For detecting things further away, a longer wavelength is better. The catch is that antennas rapidly lose performance if they're not physically matched in size to the wavelength of the energy they're meant to be receiving. Therefore, the larger the wavelength used, the larger your antennas must be, unless you want to compromise the radar's gain. The fourth factor is the radar cross-section, or RCS, of the object you're trying to detect. Target RCS is measured in square meters, and is dependent on many different things such as the direction you look at the target from, the shaping of the target, and the use of radar absorbent materials. Case in point, the MiG-29 is a considerably smaller aircraft than the B-1 bomber in terms of mass and physical dimensions. However, from the front, that same MiG-29 has a larger radar cross-section than the B-1B. Modern stealth aircraft like the F-22 and F-35 typically have RCS values which are orders of magnitude smaller than their fourth-gen predecessors. It is also important to note that the target RCS of an aircraft will vary depending on the wavelength used. The shaping of the F-22 and F-35 for instance, indicates that their designs would be more vulnerable against bands that use larger wavelengths, such as the VHF band. However, Newer patented radar absorbent materials have been shown to be highly effective against a wide range of bands, meaning that the F-22 and particularly the F-35 may be stealthier than their shaping implies. The final factor is the minimum detectable signal by your radar, also known as the radar's noise floor. In the real world, there is always some amount of radio frequency noise coming from man-made or natural sources, such as the sun. In order to function, a radar must reject or ignore signals that are weaker than this level known as the noise floor. The noise floor of a radar can be reduced by using more advanced algorithms and processors to filter out noise and look for patterns, or by using more advanced radar technologies to reduce the amount of noise and interference produced by the radar itself. Another important aspect of the radar equation is how certain factors have a greater effect than others in the detection of a target. Let's take power for example, and assume that all other variables remain constant. As we can see here, the relationship between detection range and power is to the fourth root. This is due to the inverse square law, and the fact that a radar pulse experiences this law twice, once on the way to the target, and again on the return trip back to the radar. This relationship also means that you must increase power significantly to have a minor increase in detection range. Specifically, it means that to double the detection range, without adjusting any other variables, we would have to increase the radar's output power by 16 times. To quadruple the detection range, we would have to increase output power by more than 250 times. In real life, Altering variables such as power can also have negative impacts on other variables, such as noise floor. This means that you would have to increase power even further, to account for detection range losses to noise. Looking at another variable, such as gain, 
we can see that it doesn't behave the same as power output. Instead, it is squared within the equation, which brings gain to just having a square root relationship with detection range. Put simply, this means that we can double the detection range of a radar by merely quadrupling the gain. Or to quadruple the detection range, we can increase gain by 16 times, which is far better than the 256 factor that we needed with power. Wavelength is also squared within the equation, meaning that it has the same detection range relationship as gain. Noise floor sits in the denominator of the equation. It's not squared, but it does have an inverse relationship. This means that you need to decrease the noise floor of a radar significantly to get noticeable improvements in detection range, similar to power, but inverted. Finally there is RCS, which is a key capability factor for aircraft like the F-22 and F-35. Like power, it is not squared. Looking at this relationship in regards to stealth, you need to significantly reduce your radar cross-section to have impacts on detection range. Let's look at how the radar equation can be used, by looking at an example of a stealth fighter versus a non-stealthy fighter, such as the Su-35. The Su-35 uses the Urbis PESA radar. According to the manufacturer of the radar, it has a 350 km detection range for a 3 square meter target. To find out approximately how far that radar can detect a stealth fighter of a given size, we can look at the relationship that detection range has with target RCS. First, we put in our known RBC performance parameters. Then we add in the target RCS, and finally we solve the equation. The answer in this scenario is 26.59 km, which is more than 10 times shorter than the detection range for the 3 square meter target. Visualizing this, we can see that if both jets were equipped with exactly the same radar, the stealth fighter would detect the Su-35 well in advance. But let's look at what we can do to give the Su-35 an equal detection range. On the left is the detection range for our stealth fighter. If we want to increase the output power of the radar, we would have to multiply it by 10,000 times. As these radars already operate at 10 to 20 kilowatts, we would be looking at something operating at around 200 megawatts, which is enough to power more than 30,000 Russian homes. The gas turbine required to power such a generator would be larger than the Su-35 itself. If we want to increase gain, we need to increase it by 100 times or add another 20 decibels of gain. While this sounds easier, you would require an antenna comparable to the giant dishes being used by SETI. For wavelength, and assuming that our hypothetical stealth aircraft had the same RCS regardless of wavelength, we can just increase the wavelength by a factor of 100. The Su-35's radar however has over a thousand slot antennas, each matched to the X-band by being a couple of centimeters wide. If we want to operate at a wavelength 100 times larger, which would be within the VHF band, we would normally use antennas 100 times larger, meaning each of the thousand plus antennas would need to be a couple of meters in size. Clearly that's not possible to do on a fighter, but, by using antennas that are a half or quarter the size of the wavelength, and by cutting down on the number of antennas by an order of magnitude or so, we can make such a system work on something the size of an AWACS. Unfortunately, doing this also reduces the resolution and accuracy of your radar, making it quite limited for precision targeting required for guiding a missile onto its target. For minimum detectable signal, you can reduce the noise floor of the radar by 10,000 times, but this is far easier said than done, as the military requirement for the hardening and reliability of circuitry, and the increased time complexity of some algorithms, can seriously impede the effect of Moore's law. Changing the radar's architecture to be an AESA, instead of PESA radar, will reduce the noise floor by several decibels, but this is far from sufficient. Finally, something to keep in mind is that any upgrade made to a fighter's radar, to try and defeat stealth, can be applied to the radars of those same stealth aircraft. The radar of the F-35 for instance, is thought to be comparable, if not considerably longer ranged than the Su-35s. The F-22's radar, with its new V-1 upgrade, is even longer ranged. 
This is because the F-35 and F-22's radars have a very large number of transmit and receive modules, meaning they have more output power and greater gain than most other fighter AESA radars. And by being AESA radars, they have a noise floor which can be more than four times lower than that of a PESA. Any basic advancement in radar technology that makes it easier to detect a stealth aircraft also makes it easier to detect a non-stealthy aircraft from even further away. For more information, including sources, view the video description.